today we got one fascinating article. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Criminal Insider. Today we take things to beautiful, sunny Southern California, Orange County, the 714, the land of the funk, Santa Ana. We're going to go ahead and talk about a murder of an alleged F true gang leader that took place way back in 1993. But what makes this case a little interesting in particular is the simple fact that the perpetrator wasn't caught until almost two decades later. Now, to take it a step further and to make things a little more interesting is that the murderers were members of the Vario Southside gang that just happens to be a clip within the F Troop gang that branched off and started doing their own thing. It wasn't too long after that the Vario Southside gang branched off from F Troop that they became one of the most fiercest rivals out there in the surrounding gang community. We're talking about F Troop. We're talking about Orange County. The first person that comes up to mind is none other than Sana. What's interesting about Sana is the way that he was able to hold his position for so long. A lot of people try going up against the grain. A lot of people try going against that overwhelming power. And what happened, ladies and gentlemen, it did not end well with them. They would lose. You know, the first person that comes up to mind is AD Monster. What happened to AD Monster? You know, he was trying to approach on some of his territories. He would find himself on the receiving end of a 22 caliber weapon that would ultimately take his life. You know, the next person that comes up to mind is a, is a notorious Mondo from Orange County Hard Times. What's interesting about Mondo is allegedly he was a Crip gang member before he joined that Garden Grove Radio. But what happened with that him and his whole team? Man, a lot of people are on SMY yards. A lot of people got removed. A lot of people got hit. A lot of people caught cases, caught life sentences behind behind that internal warfare right there man but you know we, we think about orange county monsters we think about muscle head we think about art you know what i'm saying there's been a slew of mexican monster members that, that are coming out of the orange county area. as of recently you know who was indicted crow you know johnny martinez and and alongside with him that was indicted was none other than notorious woody from compton seven nose who was functioning you know in orange county you know, to make things just a little more interesting, ladies and gentlemen, there's actual audio conversations leaning around out there of another Mexican monster member who's talking about taking over some of Sana Ojeda's territory. Now, he didn't need his permission to function there. And, and it was conversated by none other than the notorious Big Joe of Placencia. However, ladies and gentlemen, that is a conversation for another day. So please hit that subscribe button. As I stated before, some of Santa Ana's values, its neighborhoods, established way back in the early 1900s such as the case with f troop however they're surrounded by, by, by nothing but rivals out there you know we have dumping on site 13 we have barrio small town we have the alley boys we have barrio south side we have calle Walnut. we have calle townsend we have central myrtle we have west myrtle we have um logan street los dominoes we have barrio del Halo Saces. we got los lopers we got um the night house gang and, and, and many, many, many more gangs and cliques that thrive within the Santa, Ana, the Santa Ana community. I would be there all day if I would list all of them. Now, what makes the F Troop gang a little interesting in particular is that there's several rival neighborhoods that were once part of F Troop that branched off and started doing their own things, such as Barrio Southside, 7th Street, Bush Street, Highland Street, Eastside, and Juana. All those cliques and, and, and barrios once originated within F Troop, only within time they would branch off and started doing their own thing. Now, F Troop still stands strong. F Troop is still thriving and is still a heavy presence within the Santa Ana communities. Now, we have Salvador Park, we have West F Troop, and we have Barrio Artisa, Artisa Pilar, Arta. Not to be confused with Barrio Artisa here on Southeast LA, you know, home of none other than Notorious. Rene Box Enriquez, home of Mexican Mafia member Night Owl, home of Mexican Mafia member Negro, who was recently murdered at a homeless encampment out there in Long Beach. That is another story, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this 1993 murder, ladies and gentlemen. Please hit that like button. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take it back to the peak of this gangbanging culture, way back to 1993, when people were literally losing their lives every single day at an alarming rate. It is disturbing looking at the statistics because it is very real. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of people stayed forever young. You know, such is the case as with Hollywood, an alleged leader of the F Troop gang. Now, Hollywood was gunned down way back in 1993 in front of Saddleback High School by members of the Barrio Southside Santana gang. One of the perpetrators was immediately caught and convicted of manslaughter. 
However, what makes this a little interesting that it wasn't until almost two decades later that a routine traffic stop triggered a high-speed pursuit, which ultimately led to the arrest of an individual by the name of Boxer. Now, authorities would be baffled by the information that this individual Boxer, you know, withheld. Basically, he had some requirements. He had some stipulations. And if the authorities were able to accommodate and fulfill what this individual was requiring and asking for, then he would release some vital information surrounding that 1993 Hollywood gang murder. So the authorities did exactly that. They were able to fulfill what he was asking for. And this individual boxer released some information, some vital information, basically implicating himself in this murder. Not only did he implicate himself, but he implicated three other individuals by the name of Maroonie, Shadow, and Joker. Now, what makes this crazy, ladies and gentlemen, is that that little routine traffic stop eventually would lead to him being convicted and sentenced to 31 years to life in prison. So, yes, he was able to avoid captivity for almost two decades and just a normal routine traffic stop sentenced him to life in prison. Something that he had forgotten about. He himself found it up. I don't know what the heck he was thinking. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk about Hollywood. Now, this individual Hollywood was no stranger to authorities. This individual Hollywood, he himself was actually convicted for murder. I mean, excuse me, he wasn't convicted for murder, but he was actually charged with a murder. They say that he was responsible for actually shooting into a party and actually shooting and murdering a teacher's aide. They say the reason why he did that was because he himself was actually shot at. And now for an act of revenge, he was seeking revenge. And, you know, he basically going to find no one. So he just shot into that party, taking that person's life. However, due to the lack of evidence, they would drop the murder charge. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of these cases have a lot of twists and turns. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. So here we have it. One Chicano lost his life. Another one was murdered. And now another one's serving a life sentence.